Ho, ho, ho. Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Goodwill to all men. This year, Santa Claus has a very special gift for you. No, it's not a shiny new MacBook or a supercar Lamborghini, a mansion, or a six star luxury trip to Paris. I give you the gift of competition. It means you have to compete with everyone else in the planet to get all the good things in life that you truly desire. If you understand this and you give it your all, you will succeed and you won't need me or anyone else to get you any gift. You can buy that MacBook, that supercar, that mansion, and that trip yourself, all by yourself. But here's the catch. Now that the cat's out of the bag, yes, my big red sack, and Pandora's box is open. There will no longer be nice and naughty lists going forward. There are just winners and losers. Compete and become a winner. But what if you're a loser? You don't want to face the harsh reality of life and take the necessary actions to become the best version of yourself? Get fucked! Yeah. Ho ho ho! Merry Christmas! Ah, oh, children, do you know what time it is? It's mom time. Merry Christmas, everyone, and welcome to Mime Time, a show where we talk about overcoming identity struggle and becoming the best versions of ourselves, especially as Asian diaspora. I'm a Korean American living in Seoul, spreading the good news. And the good news is that you have unlimited potential to live the best life possible, even if you think you're a huge fuck up like I did. Thank you so much for tuning in. Let's get right into today's Christmas-themed episode, Ho Ho Ho. So yesterday, I went to church for Christmas service, and they shared the message of God sending His Son in a manger a couple thousand years ago and all that. You know, as they should, it's church. It's a particularly good church. It's a good community of peeps, and you may be from that church if you're listening to this. Shout out to Jubilee. It's a church attended by many Korean Americans in Seoul. It's like the church. I don't know if there's another one. I haven't done any, um, I haven't done enough market research, I guess. Let me tell you something. It's funny to have grown up in the Korean American church in America, to have dedicated my life to the faith, then to lose my faith, and then evolve into a degenerate heathen only concerned with worldly pleasures when I moved to Korea, only years later to start going to church again. A Korean American church in Korea. You know, on this podcast, I I talk a lot about my experiences, my spiritual, personal journey, you know, being Christian, losing my faith. And, you know, there's there's always so many things to pick apart from so many different angles. But I think growing up in the church, especially with this, I don't know if you can call it a Christian attitude, made me weak. It didn't tell me to be strong, to be smart and to be competitive. Like I didn't learn that in church. You don't really learn that, you know, from Christian theology to be strong and smart and competitive. That's not like the, the shining, you know, thing. It's, it's about like being kind and loving Jesus and, you know, forgiving others, you know, as you would you know, doing unto others as you would have to do unto them. It's all good stuff. But if you just tell losers like me, hey, you know what? It doesn't matter. Like Jesus still loves you no matter what. So you don't really have to, you know, try to compete in the material world, this life, this plane of existence. You don't, you don't really have to give a fuck. I mean, I'm not saying that that's what they explicitly try to do. That's what the church expi- explicitly is intentionally trying to do. But you're not exactly motivated to, you know, try to get a six-figure job or to get in really good shape or to learn how to fight or, you know, to compete in this materialistic competitive world. It's not something that is at the forefront of the theology and the practice of church. Again, it's okay that I don't have to become better because Jesus still loves me no matter what. God still loves me no matter what. And, and you know what? In a sense, that is true. I believe that God, if you believe in God, loves all his children unconditionally, no matter who they are or what they do. Having said that, I also believe 
he loves some children conditionally and that God has favorites and that God rewards those who follows the principles of nature to improve themselves over those who do not. The reality of nature that this God created is that it is competitive. Nature is competitive. You have to produce results. The gift of competition is nature and the very essence of life itself. Anybody who tells you otherwise is either ignorance or a liar. People compete for space and time. People compete for money and resources. People compete to buy food and homes. In today's world, when you sell something, you are competing against everyone else in the world who is selling that same thing. If you want a house, a piece of real estate, a car, a man or a woman, you are competing with other people for that home, car, or partner. I want to live in this house, but it costs millions of dollars. It's, it's in the heart of Seoul. It's in Gangnam District. And, you know, it costs millions of dollars, right? So, like, other people are competing to buy that house because everyone wants to live there. If there's a, a certain car that you want, right, it, it's, it's expensive for a reason. It's as if it's a supercar. You know, you have to compete with other people and make more money than other people to get that car. If you want a hot guy or a hot woman, attractive person, to date, right, you're competing with other people for that person, to date that person. We're only fortunate to be alive and not be killing each other on a day-to-day -day basis for food, shelter, and water because others competed and fought wars and struggled before us. They did such a great job that we're so comfortably divorced from the harsh reality of nature and competition. This is how crazy the world is. Nations compete. You have to compete. You have to fight. Life is a competition. If it wasn't, you wouldn't be alive. Nations compete for resources and power. Asia is thousands of years of varying tribes and nations competing with each other, as it is all over the planet, but especially Asia. Look at Korea, China, Japan, Vietnam, Thailand, all these different places. If we are what we eat and we are Asian and we eat rice, then let's say we are grains of rice. All these countries, these geographical locations that we come from are giant rice cookers of pressure geopolitical, social, economic pressures. I'm talking wars, famine, conflict of all kinds in order for us to become delicious cooked grains of rice. In each country, everyone flocks to densely populated urban centers, try to get to the best schools, sell their product or service, try to gain market share, try to get better opportunities than anyone else, at least for their children if they can't do it themselves. Look at Korea as an example, as a competitive society competing to get the best scores in high school, to get into the best schools, to get into the biggest companies, right? This is, this is the, this track. This is what people go through here. And only a small percentage can make it. The rest have to find another way and are shamed if they don't make it and they fail. They bring a great dishonor to their families for not getting a job at fucking Samsung. And if you're fortunate enough to get picked after spending decades in school from the time you're in elementary, middle school, high school, late nights, hours, like 10 hours a day or whatever, staying up late to pass exams, right, all the way to college. And somehow, if you're fortunate enough to get a job at Samsung, you're just a fucking salaried slave. Even if they do get a job at Samsung, they are salaried slaves and the corporation does what it can to squeeze every bit of value from their worker drones. As it should, if Samsung is to remain competitive and top dog over its competitors around the world. You're overworked, you're a slave, you have to do what your boss tells you, and you can't make him mad. And you won't dare quit your job because so many people, everyone else would kill to be working at Samsung. And you have a wife and children to provide for, their well-being and education, a mortgage for a three-bedroom unit that's worth hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars, a car and finance. You don't want to take a risk. You are trapped and you are expendable. No wonder Koreans and Asians try to get the fuck out of the rice cooker that is Asia. The kitchen is too hot. Better go to perhaps Europe, Australia, or Canada, or America, somewhere in the West where the white man has established lands of opportunity with higher standards of living. That's why Asians outcompete most of the locals in the countries they immigrate into, working long, hard hours, day in and day out, being smart, focused on education, sacrificing everything like my family did. Our families... Us, Asian diaspora worldwide, were grains of rice that were fortunate enough to escape the intense pressure of the rice cooker that was Korea or Japan or China. But we still kept that heat. We still keep that Han. 
It's deeply ingrained into our bones, our sinews and fibers, our psyche and soul. We have this immense power. We have to channel all that pain and struggle, all faculties of intelligence and creativity, strength and values to evolve into something greater than our ancestors could have ever imagined. This is nature. Going back to growing up in the Korean American church and the formation of my early character, I was born the third of three sons. When I was a baby, our family escaped Korea to America to escape the intense rice cooker that Korea was in the 90s. I grew up a weak little bitch. Other kids picked on me. I would whine and bitch. Oh, it's unfair. Life is unfair. I blame God for everything. Why are we the only Asians? Why am I the only Korean kid? Right? Why can't I speak my mother tongue? You know, like I didn't understand. Life just seemed really unfair. And you don't really know how to process the world. Like I didn't understand what my parents were going through, the sacrifices that they were doing. And I lived in the shadow of my brothers who were much older than me, right? They were like, you know, like a decade older than me. So I thought like I was really, really weak and I was really, you know, baby. Like I was kind of sheltered from like the harsh realities of life. And, you know, I thought I was defective. I was short and fat. I thought I was ugly. My whole life, I believed I was nothing, that I was weak and unworthy. I thought of myself as a loser, you know, a short, fat kid with acne, thick glasses, bowl cut, no sense of fashion, just staying home, masturbating, eating food, getting fat, playing video games all day. Like, had you known me more than 10 years ago, you would have thought the exact same about me. Like, oh, mom, he's a nice guy, but he's a loser. He's never going to get laid, right? He's not going to get job opportunities. He's not going to be, he's not going to like, at, at that point, this guy's, you know... He'll, he'll never become successful. He'll never, you know, like figure it out. But I wish someone had told me in my childhood, the sooner I accept the reality of competition in nature, the sooner that I can train my body and mind to become powerful in all ways, the greater a life I can live and thus the more positive impact I can make on the world. Because deep inside, I have what it takes. I've had it all along. I just didn't know. Nobody told me. Now I know I have inner fire, discipline, conviction. I know 99% of people are weak and lazy. I'm going to eat their hearts out. I work harder, harder, smarter, and faster than anyone else I know. Two people of equal genetics, body type, etc., are to compete with each other in a contest of, port, of sport. So let's say it's one-on-one -on -one basketball or tennis or sword fighting. And let's say the loser dies. They both have a month to train before they compete. One person trains a couple hours a day, then plays Xbox and, you know, you know, hangs out with his friends. And the other one doesn't do anything but trains eight hours a day. Who are you going to bet is going to win? Sure, there's some luck. Maybe the guy who trained less can get lucky and still win. But it's poor risk management to not train. You compete with someone at a sport. Again, football, basketball, tennis, sword fighting, whatever. How many hours are you training a day? How badly do you want it? You have to want it badly more than the other team. If you want it badly enough, more than them, you will naturally do whatever it takes to get that desired result and win. You work an eight-hour job and then you're too tired to work out or work on your side hustle? No, I work my day job, then I go home and work until it's 4 to 5 a.m., sleep a few hours before getting to my day job again the next day. When I'm awake, I'm working. There's no way... No other way to succeed than this, to compete than this. I'm already 30 years old. Had I understood the gravity of the world situation and this matrix we live in, I would have focused on taking action towards hustling and making as much money as possible as soon as possible from the age of 20. I would have focused on being fit and as strong as possible from the age of 20. Everything else would have been much easier and better. Everyone wants freedom. Everyone wants to break free of the rat race. Everyone wants to have millions of dollars, a great body and physique, beautiful romantic interests. But how badly do you want it? I want it badly because I know what's at stake. Freedom. I don't want to go to sleep because I'm not fucking rich yet. I'm not playing around. I don't have time to waste anymore. Nowadays, when I walk onto the bus or subway, I compare myself to others, especially the other men. I mean, Korean people do this too. We all do this. We all judge each other as soon as someone walks into the room. I think, if I had to kill this person in physical combat, could I do it? If we had to fight, would I win? 99% of people don't actually know how to fight. I'm only a white belt in karate, but I'm learning how to punch and kick, and I'm learning how to punch and kick harder and faster. I feel confident that I could really fuck someone up if I land a proper punch or kick, and especially if my life really depended on it. I can feel that now in my body and my mind. And you know what? I think I'm the fucking man. Even though I'm still a brokey riding with all the other brokies, yes, I am the fucking man. 
I'm only becoming stronger and faster of a fighter, a warrior, as the days go by. Likewise, if I had to compete with this person in a given endeavor, whether sports or music or business, could I outperform them? If they run a coffee shop and I had to run a coffee shop right next door, could I provide better product and service so that people would pick my cafe over theirs? Can I get as many customers in the market as possible to give me money instead of my competitor next door? I would not sleep until I knew how to put them out of business. So I walk into a room and think, I am the fucking man. There's nothing I can't do if I put my mind to it. Nobody here knows what I've been through. Nobody cares. I mean, why should they? Nobody cares about me as much as I have to in order for me to realize my highest ambitions and live the dream life I want to live. Nobody can beat me because I am the best. Nobody knows the struggles I've gone through to be who I am today, nor what I continue to struggle through. The black hole of misery and depression that I escaped from. How I transformed dark matter into exploding sun. I'm a fucking diamond, grinding it out each day and shining brighter and more intensely with each given day. I'm a rocket ship flying to the moon and I will not stop until I get what I want. You can put your head in the sand and be like most Christians and most people. You can just masturbate all day and night for years on end about how Jesus loves you and how everything's going to be okay because we're all going to go to heaven and when we die, you know, Jesus loves us forever, so whatever. Like a fucking pathetic pussy ass bitch and remain a slave in mediocrity without having realized your full genetic potential. Doesn't matter if I don't improve my life because we're all going to die anyway and God has it all figured out anyway, right? Yes, perhaps there is a God and God loves you, but he also gave you eyes and arms and legs and a mind that is capable of constructing metropolises, painting beautiful art, blowing up mountains. In developing a multi-million dollar business, I can do it 100%. I can figure out how to become rich, and I'm not going to stop until I do. I'm going to become a strong, powerful fighter with a beautiful, sexy body, and I'm not going to stop until I do. There are all sorts of objections to the journey of becoming rich. Things that I have subconsciously told myself that I will now obliterate from my mind forever. People say... Money is the root of all evil. You know, terrible things are done in the name of money. Wars are fought over money. And and yes, it's true. And that's all you see in the news and in the culture and the sentiment within societies like America and Korea. Oh, it's because the big corporations have all the money and are in bed with the government. They're all powerful and they have all the connections and they're all corrupt. You don't become rich unless you do something corrupt. Life is unfair. Rich people have it all easy. So I'm going to judge them from a ground of higher moral superiority. Oh, they're rich and they probably got it all through ill-gotten gains. But at least I'm just an honest, hard worker, not ripping people off or something like that. You know what? That's exactly what rich, powerful people, the people at the top would want you to think so that you never even aspire to become rich. That means they stay rich and you stay poor. So what? I'm not going to try and get rich because I have a conception that rich people are unfair or scammers or corrupt. I'm the nicest guy I know. I have the deepest love and respect for all humanity and all creation. I feel the pains of the people, the struggles and pains of Korea and America, the suffering of the entire world, very deeply. I know what it's like to be bullied. I know what it's like to feel lonely and nobody gives a shit about you. I get angry and and indignant when I feel someone is unjustly slighted. I can be a nice guy with goodwill to all men. But what happens when a gang of men come to want to hurt my woman or my family? Am I going to protect her? Do I have what it takes? Will I be willing and able? What does all my goodwill and character and philosophy about the world and life matter when I can't even defend or take care of myself, let alone my woman or my family or my tribe? I need power, and money is power. That is precisely why I must become rich and strong mentally and physically. What, are you going to let just the sociopaths to get rich and run the world? Have you thought about that? So if only materialistic, superficial people who exploit others are becoming rich, you're never going to try to really be rich. You're not going to explore every single possible aspect of business and wealth creation, understand the nature of money, why and how it works. Good people need to become rich to balance out the so-called exploitative, corrupt, immoral rich people if that's what they are. Here's another limiting thought. Others say money can't buy you happiness. Who says that? Who are those people? Are they rich? That might as well be a PSYOP. 
you know who wants you to believe that money is all the root of all evil and that money can't buy you happiness? It's probably rich people, rich people with power. Because if there are all these people, all these peasants who grew up with these ideas, right, ingrained into their minds that, oh, you know, like money can't buy you happiness and money's the root of all evil, then that means there's less people in the world to compete with them. And there's a, here's another one. I don't want to obsess with money because then I'll be a superficial, materialistic, blah, 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 miser. And I don't want money to change who I am. I understand those sentiments, but those are lies. It's a psyop. Yes, of course, the journey to become rich is going to change you because you have to become a different person in order to get different results. In order to get extraordinary results, you must be doing extraordinary things and become extraordinary. You can't be doing what everyone else is doing. And money is just an amplification of who I am. Again, it's just a fucking psyop. People who become, people who became great, corrupt or greedy or fucked their lives up because they won the lottery or became superficial and fake. You know what? They were already shitty people with less than noble characters to begin with. The money just revealed that. Money is just a tool. It's a form of power. Just like technology. That's what technology does. Technology is a tool and it's a form of power. People will say, for example, social media makes people so shallow and materialistic and petty and mean and angry and they fight with each other. Oh, the world's so different now. What? No. That's actually just who they were already inside. People are already shallow and materialistic and petty and mean and angry. It, it just amplifies that by blasting it out on the internet. Money, the internet, technology, these tools, it, it just magnifies who you already are. Money isn't everything. Oh, you got to love this one. Money isn't everything said by people who cope with the fact that they're not rich. Of course, money isn't everything. It's just the most important thing to acquire in order for me to maximize my chances of survival and live the greatest life possible to make the greatest possible difference in the world. People who say money isn't everything are, are coming from the wrong frame of mind, and, and they don't understand where the world is going and how inflation is going to crush us. We can barely pay rent now. Okay, what do you think is going to happen in 10 years? Where can we live? Where can we afford to live with like a 2% pay raise when inflation is just going to sweep us all away? So right now, I'm not rich. I'm at the point where I don't want to sleep until I'm rich. Yes, things take time. Some things can't be rushed. But everything that is within my control, I must maximize and work with speed. I've wasted too much time. There's no turning back. I'm on this rocket to the moon. In order to go past the stratosphere, I must keep going. I must continue building this forward momentum and nothing will stop me. Everything's at stake. This is the greatest battle of my life. The fight against myself, against my laziness, against my limitations to win, to become a fighter, to become an entrepreneur, to become rich as fast as possible so that I can not only live the life I dream of, but also help others realize their dreams too. It's cheesier than a pizza, but it's true. This episode's about competition. I'm competing in a competition. There's a Kyokushin Karate Tournament this March. I must compete. I'm going to condition myself. I'm going to win a trophy this March. Compete. Put yourself to the test in anything. If you fail, but you genuinely gave it your best, there's still honor. If you win, even better. There's no choice but to compete. Life is a game. You're already playing. If you choose not to play and go AFK, guess what? You'll get played. Don't waste your fucking time like I did, especially if you're in your 20s or even in your tweens, teens. Build something now. If you believe you are totally incompetent and worthless, then this message is for you. You can change your mind and do a complete 180 as I have. And I believe you can do it faster than I did because you have me to tell you that it's possible. I'm 30 years old right now. And if I had the ability to talk to 20-year-old mime or 15-year-old mime, I would shake them by the shoulders and, and just tell them everything that I know now. And just drill into their heads and say, hey, you got to hustle. You got to hustle every single day. When you're awake, you're working. Do it, do it, do it, do it. Build, 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 build. Speed, speed, speed. Don't waste your fucking time. I thought I was doomed to a life of incompetence and worthlessness and failure. But now I see I'm becoming something greater than I could have ever imagined. If the latent power of the sleeping dragon is within me and awakening, then you can find that dragon, that Bengal tiger, deep inside yourself as well. It must be within you. Something must be within you in order for your ancestors to have survived long enough that their bloodline led to your existence. What did they struggle for? What did they survive 
famine, wars, and conquests, and saber-toothed tigers, and all this shit for. So you can just feel sorry for yourself and bitch and complain about the state of the world and the job market and unemployment and lack of opportunities and the injustice and unfairness of life. And stay addicted to junk food and bad habits and masturbation and drugs and be a fat, disgusting, competent loser. No. This Christmas, the greatest gift that I have received is the message of competition. That is the good news, that life is a competition. It is hard, but we have the ability to compete. Because when we compete actively, truly, and with all heart, mind, and body, we excel and then have the ability to buy ourselves and others whatever gifts we want in this life, material, spiritual, or otherwise. And the gift of competition precedes an even greater gift, the gift of freedom. Because competition is the truth, and the truth will set you free. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode of Mime Time. It really means a lot to me. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it with a friend who you think needs to hear this message. Don't be afraid of competition. Don't be afraid to compete. Be grateful that you have the opportunity to even compete and believe in yourself that you can succeed and never, ever, ever give up. I'd love to hear your feedback, so please email me at mime at mimetime.com or DM me at mimetime on Insta. Merry fucking Christmas and have a happy new year. I'll talk to you next time. Mime time.